Hi, I'm Suzanne Huang, and I'm a television host, actor, comedian. I was definitely an overachieving perfectionist. I was a straight A student. I think one time I got a 99 on a test, and my mother said, Omo no, which means, oh my god, in Korean. Omo no, who got 100? Like, it was some great scandal. I got a BA in psychology at Yale, like a good Asian. And then I went and got a master's degree in cognitive psychology at Brown University. And I got a job at a healthcare consulting firm called JSI in Boston. And there was a cattle call for extras on the TV show Spencer for Hire. And I thought that would be fun to be an extra in a TV show. And within a month I had quit my job. I was in Screen Actors Guild. And then I moved to New York City because a commercial agent wanted to sign me. And that commercial agent actually got me my first television hosting audition for a show called Breakfast Time on FX. The thing that really put me on the map career-wise was booking a show called House Hunters on HGTV. In 2006, I felt a little bump in my left breast. So I thought I should go get it checked out. I think about two weeks later, I got a phone call. The doctor, she said, hi Suzanne, your test came back positive for breast cancer. And then I said, wait, are you sure? My boobs are so small, is that really possible? Maybe you should double check. And she said, you need to clear your schedule and come in and meet with a surgeon. And while I was recovering from the lumpectomy, I researched radiation and chemo and didn't feel like those were for me. And then I made some lifestyle changes and thought I was fine. And then a year later, I felt another lump in the same spot that the initial lump was. And I thought, come on, no way. So this time I chose not to get surgery because it seemed like the surgery didn't work the first time. So I'm gonna go all alternative. So I probably tried about 50 different alternative holistic treatments. While those treatments made me feel good, none of them reversed the cancer. So I had a quarter-sized tumor protruding from my left breast. It became the size of a grapefruit. And so I decided I want to get this taken out. So I got an, another surgery. And the surgery site, it left a, it left a big crater, so it got infected and it opened up, and it was filled with black necrotic tissue. And I had to be rushed to the surgeon's office, and there was no time and no way to properly anesthetize me for this experience. And she had to take a pair of surgical scissors and snip out the black necrotic tissue from my boob crater with no anesthesia while I screamed in pain. But it was necessary. So this intense physical pain from the grapefruit-sized tumor sticking out of my chest was also accompanied by insomnia, which is something I also had never had in my life. I never had insomnia. If you combine intense physical pain for uh, about three months with the inability to sleep, it made me crazier than I've ever felt. I didn't think I was psychotic until this one night, when it was about three o'clock in the morning, I was with my pug, Bonsai, the light of my life, who has since passed. I can't find the bandages that I'm looking for. I'm picking up things and I can't find anything, I'm taking things out of the box and I'm throwing them against the wall and I'm breaking things and all of a sudden, I just lost it. It was like, you know what, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And I thought, I know. I'll kill myself. So now I'm psyched. I'm motivated. I'm like, great, I'm gonna kill myself. Okay, how do people kill themselves? I'm, I can shoot myself. Do I have a gun? Oh no, I don't have a gun. I'm a pacifist. I could drink cleaning solution, right? I'll just drink poison. And I rush to my pantry and I've switched to all non-toxic, organic cleaning solution. I'm like, ah, I'm too healthy to kill myself. I have nothing in here. I have a kitchen knife, kitchen knife. I could stab myself. 
wait a minute, that would hurt. And the whole point of this is I want to get rid of this physical pain. And then I look down at Bonsai, who is looking at me, trembling and terrified of me for the first time since I adopted him. And then I thought, oh no, who would take care of Bonsai? I can't kill myself. So I scooped him up and I was so exhausted that I crawled into bed. And for the first time in three months, I slept. And the next morning, when I woke up, I realized I didn't want to kill myself anymore. I had back surgery, multiple breast surgeries, hip replacement surgery because it metastasized to stage four. It was in my skull, my left breast, my right breast, my lymph nodes, my back, and my hip. I was given six months to live in 2011. And during that time while I was recovering from all these treatments, my friends came over and my friend Priscilla, she knelt down and shaved my legs because I couldn't do it myself. And to watch her do it with all the love and care in her heart was one of the most intimate, beautiful experiences of my life. I had to learn how to ask for help and love and receive it because I was out of balance. I had only been giving and not receiving. The third time I got breast cancer, I had breast cancer three times in nine years because I'm an overachiever. I finally realized that it was time for me to come out of the cancer closet. So I did an NBC News interview and I did a press release and I received a tsunami of love and support from my family, from my friends, and from fans all over the world. And I was quite literally loved back to life. I had to really turn myself away from my ancestors by stepping into talk therapy and I have a cognitive behavioral therapist who I love, and I get to talk about what's going on with me, talk about it, sort it out, have somebody with, it's impossible by definition to have perspective on yourself. So to find somebody wise who has some training is an amazing thing. So talk therapy has helped me a great deal. And so has 12-step program. I have never been addicted to alcohol or drugs, but I have been addicted to people, in a way, and the need to save and rescue and fix and help everybody. I learned that asking for help is crucial to well-being. We were not meant to go through things alone. I have a lot of different creative outlets for my emotions. I sing, I dance, I write songs, I act, I do stand-up comedy, I love to create characters, I love to play and goof around and laugh. I love to find the levity and the humor in everything. You know that laughter boosts our immune systems and it releases endorphins and serotonin. It's just great all around. It's great for your abs. It's just one of the greatest things you can do. I wake up every morning feeling like this is bonus round. I'm so grateful to be alive and vertical and pain-free. I am enthralled with the present moment. I just bask in gratitude for everything around me. Going from somebody who wasn't supposed to feel anything and not talk about it to somebody who's just bring it all on. I want to feel all of it. There's this expression, you can look at the past, but don't stare, it's rude. So I no longer look at the past for evidence of what my present and future can be.